Um, let's talk about um, the value of property. How do we determine the value? Um, what are sort of the factors that contribute to us knowing the value of a property? And how can one maintain it and ultimately either um, increase the value of a property? Yeah, I think, to me, it's such an interesting um, subject. And... Um Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi and I'm your host for tonight. I'm sure everyone has been having a beautiful week and we are back as usual, 7 p.m. right here on the Private Property uh, Facebook page. If you are joining us on the Twitter Spaces, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully you guys are going to stay till the end of the conversation because we are talking something everybody needs to get to know about tonight. Uh, our topic tonight is how the value of property is shifting. So if you are in the market of buying um, or you're looking to sell or you want to invest and grow your po uh, portfolio, tonight's conversation is something that you really want to make sure that you pull out that notepad and start jotting some of these notes down. Um, tonight I'm being joined by Gerard Kutia, who's the Managing Director at Real Net Holdings, who's going to be um, chipping in in the conversation and telling us how really the value of property has been shifting over the past 10, 15 and even the recent past. Uh, Gerard, good evening and welcome. Hi, good evening to me and uh, it's great to be on your show again and uh, good evening to all your viewers and your listeners. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Um, let's jump, jump into the conversation. And tonight we're talking property valuations and um, how ultimately the, the value of property is changing and how things, um, the prices are going either up or down. Um, let's talk about... Um, the value of property. How do we determine the value? Um, what are sort of the factors that contribute to us knowing the value of a property? And how can one maintain it and ultimately either um, increase the value of a property? Yeah, I think uh, to me it's such an interesting um, subject. And um, the, the answer, the, the, the multiple um, um, items that you take into account when you value a property. But I think the, the, the most important one for, for um, sellers and buyers and potential investors out there is to look at um, the ultimate value is determined by a willing buyer, willing seller, so free market um, environment. But I think the, the specific things that does make a difference when you look at property and you compare them um, from a value point of view is the location of the property, um, always important. Um, the size of the property being one of the key elements. If you look at some valuations, almost so done rent per square meter. So the bigger the property in, in square meters, the bigger the value would be um, as a norm. Then rooms and amenities are also very important. So if you compare a two bedroom um, unit to a three bedroom or four bedroom unit, so then again, size comes into play as well as the, the facilities or the ability for the property to accommodate more people, which has got value. When we talk about property values and then the layout the practicality and the purpose of the property also plays a role so again if you look at a family home the question is how how well is the the home um uh, accommodating to a family and what type of family can it accommodate larger families is it a lock up and go for single people so again i think purpose and practicality and layout does play a role when we when we get to value um, security and green technology is one of the important things these days that does play an important role when buyers look at a property. And again, if you look at the value of a property and comparing values, then these type of items do make a difference when, uh, when buyers are comparing uh, properties of the same size and amenities with one another because these do have value uh, to certain buyers. Then smart technology, connectivity, I think especially connectivity in these days, so properties in, in areas where there's um, less connectivity from a fiber point of view or, connect, or, um, or work from home point of view, um, also influenced um, from a value point of view. And then ultimately um, our, our system um, in South Africa also works from a value point of view is comparable sales. So that would be when you take all of the previously mentioned items, you compare properties and then that actually becomes the value of a property, what a willing buyer is willing to pay for a property based on um, all the amenities, size, and, um, and so forth of the property. So your second question, um, main, um, what can you do to maintain a property? Does it um, help with the value? It doesn't, it definitely helps with value because um, I think the one thing that you haven't asked is how does a home lose value? We always talk about 
how do you appreciate um, a, a property or make it worth more? But I think an important note is also um, properties do decline in value when they uh, become um, um, an aged property where the structure becomes a little bit um, aged, etc. And again, um, bad maintenance to a property is definitely um, a negative influence on your property value. So good maintenance, um, definitely a plus when you want to increase or maintain the value of your property, make it comparable in the market, get top dollar for it when you want to sell it. And then how do you increase the value of your property? You can always extend it. You can add rooms to it, square meters, um, as long as it's within the building plans or approved building plans and within your, um, the rights of your property or your earth. And um, yeah, I think anything that you can add, like um, getting off the grid, those type of technologies that you can add to your property will also increase it um, outside of the obvious. Um, thank you so much for that. You know, a couple of a couple of episodes ago, we spoke uh, specifically about how people can winterproof their houses and how this ultimately just uh, increases their uh, um, the value of their property. So I just want us to talk a little bit how it translates into rents and cents for them. Are we saying that if you um, if you maybe winterproof your house and put all of these eco friendly and um, um, eco uh, green um, things to it, like you know um, the the offerings that are available in the market, are we saying that it will raise your the value of your property by 10, 20%? Do we have a rough figure so that someone who is willing or who is looking at doing this knows how much they're going to increase the, the value of, of their property by, you know, roughly? Um, to me also, um, again, it's a, an interesting question. So if you look at, um, at the cost of um, getting off the grid these days and, and adding um, cells to your property and solar and so forth, I think um, it, still, it still needs to be tested what that percentage would be. Um, because I think, again, if you look at, at buyers, because remember, these type of technologies might um, be more important to certain buyers, which wants to be um, self-sustainable and off the grid versus somebody that can buy a property which is larger in size and maybe offers more amenities um, and in a different location, but do not have um, these green technologies in them. So I think it's a very, it's a difficult um, for me uh, question to answer um, what, what percentage will it add? Because I think it's definitely um, something which would be specific to a buyer. If we look at new developments though, um, most of them are, are starting to use green technology in the, in the development. And you can see those are, are definitely I think let's say between 10 and 15 percent more expensive or up to 20 percent more expensive than than units that do not have that type of technologies in it um the difficulty from from a, a sales point of view again is as i said is the affordability um of a unit or property is always the key element um, when it comes to value and um, if you add these technologies and you add 10 or 15 or 20 percent to the value or the price of the property let's not talk about value let's talk about price then you are definitely limiting the number of available buyers that will qualify for that property and or that's willing to pay that extra dollar um, to get that type of um, um, peace of mind, if you want to call it that, or modern technology in the property. Sure. Thank you so much for that. Um, if I'm already a property owner and I've got this house and I've been owning it for a couple of years and I would like to now know the value of my property, if it has appreciated or depreciated, how do I go about that? What, what are the steps that I need to take um, in order to ascertain my, my, um, the value of my property? So the first step would always be the advice would be is to get, uh, to get a professional in to, to guide you along the, the value of property because I think it's the same um, for any of us. So let's say I'm, I'm in real estate um, for most of my life, but I want to buy a car, then where do I start? It's the same principles that surely apply. It would be um, in a car, maybe mileage, um, condition, um, quality, brand, et cetera. In real estate, there are basic fundamentals. Um, as I said, amenities, size, location, um, and, and other properties that makes comparable sales, which is registered in the deeds office. And this type of information might not always be freely available to the consumer. I know um, on certain sites like um, like your big portals, um, like yourselves and Lightstone, there are guidelines. But I think for for the consumer, just to make it easy, is estate agents are registered and qualified estate agents or, or property practitioners, as we now call, um, are trained to do this, and um, it's a free service. So I think start there. 
Um, ask a property practitioner that's registered and qualified to come in, give you a comparable sales value based on other sales in the area, and to show you which um, which sales they are comparing it with. That would be step one because that's actual deeds office information, which means it's factual on value. And then secondly, which uh, what I always do is um, I would look at it from a buyer's point of view. If you're a seller and um, you go to prior uh, property the portal, you enter the suburb which you're looking to search, you put in the criteria very much the same as your, your own property would be from an amenities point of view, size, location, etc. And then you would see what the range of available properties are in that suburb. And that gives you, to me, that gives you a, quite a good idea, I think, as a, as, a, as a consumer, what the value range or the price band would be in which your, your property would fall um, just from an just from a, from a outside in point of view. But the, the actual fact would be an estate agent, property practitioner, and or a qualified registered valuer. If, if you want to get um, uh, that, that level of valuation. All right. Um, I want to ask about uh, the, the increasing or decreasing of the value of property because a lot of people are going into, into buying property as investments now because they believe it's very lucrative because uh, property appreciates. And um, in some cases, we find that it depreciates. So um, it's not really clear to a lot of people in terms of um, the, the method there, in terms of why does um, property appreciate annually and why does in some cases it depreciate can you quickly just take us through high level to say um, this is the reason why most properties appreciate and this is the reason why most of them depreciate right again um, to me i'm going to try and keep it um keep it as simple as possible yeah. um so i think i think that the key there is that um so property um is is, is a scarcity element so there's not i mean there's no uh, additional land being made. Um, so the available property for development or land that's available for development is quite, res is quite restricted, which means supply and demand means if there are more people, if the population grows, um, then there would be a demand for more housing. And that housing can be either be um, for people to rent um, and or to buy, which means um, either way, it's a good thing for property ownership because remember, if you're an investor, you're looking for that um, that supply side of, of rentals, which means people want um, to rent a property to live in. And um, so the moment that there's supply and demand, then there would be an increase in value as a norm. So if you look at if you look at what they talk about property inflation, you look at inflation, uh, which we all know there's the consumer price index, the inflation by which um, products grow and, and, and services are escalated annually. It means that if a um, developer starts developing today um, and uh, they finish the product um, only, let's say, uh, beginning of next year, there would be most probably one or two or three, um, I think these days it might be even more with the, with the, with the um, cost of fuel that's rising so, so drastically. There would be definitely a, um, an escalation in the material price that they use for building which is cement, um, zinc, steel, all that type of materials, which means that property becomes more expensive to develop um, as, a, as a starting point. It can never become less um, expensive to, to develop a property from this year to next year. So and that's where, um, where inflation plays a role, where property prices as new properties are more expensive to build. It means that all property prices must, uh, must grow with it as well. Um, so then if you look at inflation, let's say inflation is, um, as at the moment, is between 5 and 6%, I think, the CPI. Then there would be um, house price inflation, which Lightstone, I think, at the end of January, they stated was 4.35%. So house price growth would be more or less around that, that number, So which is still single digits at this point in time. And then interestingly enough, um, the seg different segments in, in price, price bands uh, grow at different rates. And again, I think that is um, due to demand. So entry-level pricing and sectional title is, is more demand, it's more affordable than, uh, than um, full title or, or lifestyle estate um, units. And that means the, the, the growth or the ability to grow in, 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 the, in the lower end of the market is bigger because um, of the demand and the affordability that's there versus the top end of the market, which is a smaller percentage in growth, maybe per annum, 
Um, but remember, in real terms, that is still um, uh, a, a smaller percentage on a higher value, which means there's still growth. I think sometimes we, we tend just to look at the percentages versus the actual rand amount growth that happens in these, um, these mid to top range properties, which is still significant, even, even if the percentages are low. Um, so I think that's, that's just to try and answer the question. It's quite a, it's quite a technical question of, of how of house price inflation, et cetera, works. But um, then the question, the other important question that you asked to me is, why do we sometimes find ourselves as property owners um, having a property which we bought, let's say about 18 months ago, and that property is now when we phone the property practitioner or, or we try and sell it, it's actually, it feels like it's either worth exactly what I paid for it two years ago or 18 months ago. Um, and that is, that is the negative, negative growth. Um, and that's when you see there's actual negative growth in the market. And, um, and that just means, again, remember supply and demand is the ultimate um, um, stimulus for, for property. And when interest rates um, start going up as it's doing at the moment, even though it's small increments, and um, the pressure on consumers from an from a inflation point of view and a and living cost point of view is, is increasing like it is at the moment as well, it means less people can afford properties in certain price ranges. And the moment that's, that a demand type is down, which is an influence of economical um, factors such as interest rates and, and just the, the, the state of the economy, then it means that there's less demand, which means property prices will not grow as quickly and as aggressively in percentage and in, in real terms as it would when the market is buoyant and the economy is buoyant and, um, and property prices have been, have been um, growing slowly or negatively for, for uh, a couple of years, like we saw just after COVID, which I think property prices has really is, is sort of caught up to, to um, where the, the, the growth will allow it to go now and will slowly grow from here um, as we see uh, the economic cycle turn and the interest rate cycle turn. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, Kharat, and hopefully everybody who's watching at home has received so much insight about this topic tonight on how they can increase uh, the, the value of their property and what to look for when you're looking in the market um, in terms of projections, um, if you are buying for investing, if you are buying for living, or if you're just overall looking to manage and maintain it and uh, want to also increase it if you already have a property that you have purchased. So thank you so much, Kharat. We really, really appreciate you taking our time and really talking to us tonight. Um, the Love is coming in from social media and everybody is legit sending their green hearts to say thank you so much and we really appreciate it you're so welcome to me thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you for your viewers enjoy thank you have a good evening you too thanks hey. thanks man. bye and with that, we have come to the end of today's episode where we specifically spoke on how you can increase the value of your property and what to look out for. What are those things that you need to look out for and where um, or the way, where we are seeing this going, where we are seeing property valuations going in the next five, ten years, um, the location of the property, the amenities that are around it, and so many other different factors that play a role. Thank you so much for joining us tonight um, on the Private Property Podcast. See you tomorrow, 7 p.m. sharp. Uh, and if you are joining us on the to spaces thank you so much um keep uh, stay tuned you may just find something really really uh beneficial for you thank you so much and have a good evening